So we're going to pre-populate a Google Form from spreadsheet data. So Google Forms are probably the best tool in the Google Suites app, if you ask me, only because it allows me to let any user fill out that form, and I'm able to get that data so easily into a spreadsheet. And it doesn't matter what device they use, so long as it can get on the internet, they can fill out my form. They don't have to have a Google account. They don't need to remember a username and password. I can share the URL with anybody. They can fill it out, and I can get that information. So that's super awesome. What's not awesome is that it allows the end user, the person filling out the form, to type in whatever they want. And data consistency is really important. So when I ask them for their name, sometimes they'll get creative and their name is Robert and they'll put Bob or they'll put Smith, Bob or whatever they're going to do. They don't necessarily type it in correctly. They might type in uh, spelling errors and different things like that. So this is a trick that's going to help us to get data consistency so that when I'm looking at the spreadsheet, Everything looks really good. So this is the thing that you need to walk away from and remember. Quotation, ampersand, ampersand, quotation. This is the magic sauce that takes this from being seemingly complicated to being super simple. So quotation, ampersand, ampersand, quotation. Put that in your mind. So we're going to concatenate the custom URL. What this means is we're going to take information from the spreadsheet and we're going to put it into the Google form automatically so that the end user does not have to type it. So why would I want to do that? If I'm having students fill out a rubric, I don't want to have them have to fill out their ID number, their name, their email address. Those are just places they can make typos or get creative. So I want them to just open it up and self-assess. If I was an administrator and I'm doing teacher evaluations, I want to walk in the classroom and get started with checking off the different things that I'm observing. I don't want to have to type in the teacher's name and their room number and that kind of information. I already know that. So I'm able to pre-populate those, get a custom URL, and then when I walk in the room, I'm ready to go. If you're doing any sort of conference evaluations, you want to be able to have the conference participants just fill out the evaluation. They shouldn't have to be filling out the presenter's name, the session title, the session slot, or the room number, any of that information, you already know that. So you can actually pre-populate that into the Google form. If you're doing any kind of inventory assets, you have the information that what the asset numbers are and you just have to go out and locate those devices around campus. So you can pre-populate those so you're ready to go. And especially if you're doing peer evaluation, where students have to type in the name and the project title of another student's project, that needs to be pre-populated so that you are able to cluster the data together to look for patterns and see how overall the students did. So you're going to need to have consistency. Any kind of data collection, especially if you're reusing the, the Google Form, this is a really good trick. So your first step is to create a Google Form. Then you want to get a pre-filled URL. Now the way to do that is to be in the edit screen under the responses tab and you go down and you're going to see the option to get pre-filled URL. So you're going to click on that. And what you want to do is you want to put placeholder data where you want to pre-fill it. So notice in each of the fields I don't actually put in someone's name. So like first name, I type in first name in capital letters like I'm yelling at myself and no space bars. I'm trying to draw attention to what I want in that spot. So for last name, I put last name, no space bar, capital letters, same for email address. So I want to choose what kind of things can I pre-populate so the students don't have to fill it out. Then I hit submit and it's going to give me a unique URL that will pre-populate the information that I just slugged. Now you should have some sort of spreadsheet that has that information already. I'm a teacher, I have a roster of my students that already has their ID number, their first name, their last name, and their email address, or you need to create one, go find those. If you're doing a conference, you already have a spreadsheet that has the session title, the session presenter, the room number, etc. So you want to go find that spreadsheet, and in the column next to the data, in a blank column, you're going to type equals quotation, and you're going to paste that custom URL and end the quotation. So notice the quotation marks. And then this is the magic sauce. Remember, quotation, ampersand, ampersand, quotation. And you're going to look for all that help text. All those places that you are yelling at yourself in capital letters, you're going to replace those with quotation, ampersand, ampersand, quotation. And then you want to place your cursor in between the ampersands. And you're going to want to use cell referencing. So where is the last name? What cell is that in? And you're going to type in that cell reference. So then you're going to have 
a custom URL that's pulling the information from the spreadsheet. Now you're going to apply that to the rest of the spreadsheets. So you're going to click on the corner and fill down and it's going to apply to all of the rows. So let's see what that looks like. So this is an example of a Google form. You'll see that it requires that the student fill out their ID number, their first name, their last name, their email address before they can ever get to the self-evaluation. I just want students to jump in and start evaluating. So I want all of this filled in for them. So what I do is on the edit screen, when I'm editing my Google form, under responses, I get a pre-filled URL. And now it looks like the form, but it's not. This is where I am able to type in my sample data. So student ID number, I type SID number in capital letters. I'm yelling at myself in capital letters, last name, email address. So once I get the fields that I want to have pre-populated, I skip everything else, go ahead and skip it, and come down to the bottom and hit submit. This creates for you a unique URL, you want to copy it. So I'm going to copy that URL, and then I have a spreadsheet that already has ID number, first name, last name, and email address for all the students in my class. So over here in the column, in the column next to it, I put equals, quotation, paste, quotation. So that is the URL. So when I click on this URL, notice that it pre-populates the ID number, first name, last name of that help text that I typed. But of course, I don't want it to say that. I want it to have Walt's name in it. So what I want to do is I want to double click so I can edit the URL. And I'm looking for that placeholder data like SID number, I'm going to highlight it, quotation, ampersand, ampersand, quotation, and in between the quotation, the ampersands, I want to ask myself, where is the SID number? That was in A2. Go find the next one, first name. And I type quotation, ampersand, ampersand, quotation, and in between the ampersands, where was first name? That was in B2. And then here's last name, quotation, ampersand, ampersand, quotation. And in between the ampersands, I want to say where's last name? That was in C2. And then I'm able to find email address, quotation, ampersand, ampersand, quotation, at D2. So now I have a custom URL that's using cell referencing. I push enter. Now when I click on that link, you'll notice it now fills in Walt's name for me. So if I give Walt that URL, he's going to be able to fill this out without having to fi fill in his own data. So it's going to be spelled the way that it matches my roster. Now what I'd like though is for this to be for the entire roster of students. So I go back and I click one time on the cell with the formula. I move my mouse to the bottom right hand corner. There's a little tiny square and I just pull down. And what this gives me is a custom URL for every student in my class. So I have Kristen, I click on her unique URL, and now I have a form that says Kristen.